Hi, this is JJ at CCBC. In this video, we're going to talk about color. Uh, specific topics we'll focus on include the difference between RGB and CMYK color, as well as what hexadecimal color is. So before we can talk about color, we need a basic vocabulary for it. So hue would be what we think of as the pure colors, red, green, blue, orange, purple. These are all examples of hues. Saturation is the intensity of a hue. So 100% saturation is a very pure color, 0% saturation will actually be a muted gray. Now if we add black to one of our hues, we get a darker color, which we call a shade, and if we add white to a hue, we get a lighter co color called a tint. Um, alpha is an additional term we need to know for computer graphics because alpha stores transparency. So 100% uh, alpha would give us a very opaque color, a very solid color and 0% alpha would give us a completely transparent color, it would be completely invisible because it would be completely transparent. So these are some terms we need to know in order to talk about color. Now there's two types of color theory we need to talk about. The first is subtractive color theory. This is how color in the real world works. Uh, so in the real world you have a light source, whether that's the sun in the sky or a light bulb in the room, and it's projecting white light. And you'll notice in our graphic here, our white light actually contains all the colors in the rainbow. That's because each color is a different wavelength, and all those wavelengths combined create white light. So as that white light is projected from the light bulb, and it hits an object like this apple, the surface of the apple will absorb or subtract different wavelengths of light. So green, yellow, orange, blue, purple. These are all absorbed by the surface of the apple. The only wavelength they can't absorb is red. So the red light bounces off of the apple and it hits our eye and we perceive the apple to be red because that's the only color it couldn't subtract from the full color spectrum of the white light. All right? So this is how color works in the real world. You have white light to illuminate an object. The surface of that object absorbs or subtracts different wavelengths of color. Whatever isn't subtracted bounces off of the object and that's the color we perceive the object to be. All right, so that's subtractive color theory. Computer screens don't work that way. Computer screens don't reflect light. Matter of fact, if you turn off all the lights in the room, you can still see your computer monitor because it's projecting its own light. So we call this additive color theory. You start with a black screen, your computer's off, and when you turn it on, it starts adding colors together uh, and project them into your eyes. Now, computer screens are created with red, green, and blue values. Right, so RGB. Here you can see an image where I've separated the red, green, and blue channels. Uh, so you can see them individually, but on the right side you can see what they look like normally when all three channels are combined to create the full spectrum of color. All right, so additive color theory starts with black and you slowly add or project light into somebody's eyes. Um, and as those lights are combined you can get pretty much any color in the color spectrum. Now the color wheel is basically a harmonious relationship of colors. So as we discussed earlier, hues are these sort of solid colors in this middle ring. So red, green, blue, orange, purple. As we add black, we get our shades until we get pure black. And as we add white, we get our tints moving outward until we get pure white. So this is just a nice way to map out uh, harmonious relationships in color. Now RGB versus CMYK, what's the difference? So RGB is computer color, red, green, and blue. It's additive color theory, it's projected light coming out of your computer screen. CMYK is subtractive color, so it's print. If I was to make posters or stickers or I was to silk screen a shirt, we would use CMYK color. CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and key. With uh, CMYK, it's very hard to mix cayenne, magenta, and yellow and get a nice solid black. Uh, so what they ended up doing was they added a fourth printing plate, the key plate, which would print black separately uh, from cayenne, magenta, and yellow. So if I was to ask you what CMYK stood for in a midterm or a final, I would accept cayenne, magenta, yellow, and key. I would also accept cayenne, magenta, yellow, and black because it stands for the key plate. Okay, so let's talk about color values, how we store those values and know uh, how to represent different colors. So to do that, I'm going to use Photoshop. Uh, but before we get to Photoshop, red, green, blue values range from 0 to 255. CMYK ranges from 0 to 100%. And we're going to introduce a new color code called hexadecimal code, which is the same as RGB. So you'll notice it's represented with six characters. The first two are red, 
the next two are green, and the next two are blue. So let's take a look at Photoshop and see how it manages those colors. So I'm going to open up uh, the color picker, and right now my current color is black. And you'll notice the red, green, blue values are all zero, and so our hexadecimal values are also all zero. Remember, this is red, green, and blue, right? CMYK, it's different percentages. I'm not going to talk a lot about CMYK because we're not focusing on print in this class. Uh, just understand it's the same color, just represented two different ways. All right, so I'm going to ignore CMYK from now on. We're going to focus on RGB and hex colors. Now in our color picker, you have your hue in the upper right corner. In this case, it's red. Upper left is white, and bottom right is black. So if I was to select white in the upper left corner, you'll notice our range of values is 255, 255, 255. So this is our maximum red, green, blue. Remember, it's projected light, so we combine them to create white. And down here, if we look at our hexadecimal color code, we have a bunch of Fs. Now, why is that? Um, the reason for that is, remember, we only have two characters. The first two characters are red. Well, how do we say 255 with only two characters? We need three digits in order to represent that value. So, and this is a very disturbing image, and I apologize, but it illustrates a point. This is how they count hexadecimal colors. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then we add letters, A, B, C, D, E, F. So it could be like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, but we can't have a 10 because that's two characters. So we use the letter A instead. So that allows us to create hexadecimal colors combinations down here. So 255 is FF. If I was to select this red, you'll notice that the red value is 255. That makes sense. No green, no blue needed. So down here it's represented as FF0000. So full red, no green, no blue. And that's how we represent color codes. Keep in mind that RGB and hexadecimal codes, they're two ways of saying the same thing. It's like speaking French and German. It's just two different languages referring to the same object or the same color. Um, CMYK is a different thing for print. Um, since we're working in the digital realm, we're only going to be working with RGB and hex codes from now on. Um, but just be aware of CMYK in case you decide you make a graphic and you eventually want to print it or put it on a t-shirt or a poster. It's good to know. So that concludes this lecture. I'll see you in the next one.